The LR12500-1.0 has now been added to our crawler crane portfolio below the LR13000. The design of the slewing platform and the main boom sets new standards, as the uniquely wide main boom gives the crane the stability of a power boom. We therefore call it the high performance boom. Despite the enormous capacity of this new crawler crane and the size of its individual components, it comes with a unique practical concept to ensure it can be transported economically. The new power pack is mainly designed for loading heavyweight goods such as offshore wind power components at ports or for industrial applications. Hello and welcome to the final edition in 2022. We're looking at the game changer for tomorrow's energy. A crane designed primarily for handling offshore wind power components and heavy industrial equipment. But we'll tell you more about that in one of the next editions. Today, the first topic we want to discuss is transport. In this age of climate change, at Liebherr, we're working on finding solutions to create sustainable production procedures and greener processes. And since we want to go as far as we possibly can in terms of climate protection, we're also prepared to enter uncharted territory. We've genuinely done this in the form of our trial for transporting a Liebherr rough terrain crane destined for overseas export. Every year, around 1,000 mobile and crawler cranes leave our factory to be loaded at major seaports, and this number is on the rise. Generally, our mobile cranes cover the routes to the ports under their own steam, but rough terrain cranes and crawler cranes must be transported to the ports using lots of heavy high-volume haulage trucks, which involves a great deal of logistics work. We've now conducted a trial to find out whether we could simplify this process and, above all, do so using fewer resources. An LRT 1090-2.1 had to be delivered to Zeebrugge in Belgium for shipment. This powerful crane, suitable for use in open cast mines or large construction sites, with its enormous gross weight of around 55 tons, is not licensed for driving on roads, so it's split into two packages for transport, the basic machine, including the superstructure and boom in one parcel, and accessories such as the hook block and ballast slabs in the other. But instead of the 800-kilometer route on a low loader to the Belgian coast, the journey ended in Mannheim, after around one-third of the distance. At the Rhine port there, the crane was driven onto an enormous Rhine ferry, together with three other Liebherr mobile cranes, several new truck tractor units, and around 100 tractors. The subsequent journey down the Rhine via Rotterdam and on to Antwerp, the largest brake bulk port in the world, took three days. On arrival, the cargo was transferred to a barge train made up of tugs and Roro barges. The planned route led partly through Dutch territory toward the open sea, and finally to the port of Zeebrugge. The Valenius Wilhelmsen Shipping Company, whose enormous ocean-going vessels take care of the maritime transfer of Liebherr machines throughout the world, was responsible for this section of the journey. In short, the plan ran like clockwork. Waiting times for oncoming traffic at locks and bascule bridges reduced the average speed of the barge train a little, but the time required for transport by waterway was low compared to road transport. The steady increase in traffic, ever longer diversions due to ramshackle motorway bridges, and the complicated licensing processes for heavy haulage transport all mean that we regard the option of using the ferry and barge as a genuine alternative. Benjamin Jens, a really exciting trial. Why were we looking for a new means of transport as an alternative to the road? Essentially, the search for new or better transport routes in financial and ecological terms is one of the main challenges facing the shipment department. In this pilot project, we were looking for an alternative to our most used export ports, Bremerhaven and Hamburg, which we can also reach by water. Fortunately, the issue of environmental protection is also playing an increasingly important role in the transport sector. Furthermore, the route from Ehingen to Bremerhaven and Hamburg by road is taking longer and longer and is becoming even more difficult. Due to the infrastructure problems in Germany, especially our ramshackle, dilapidated bridges, the transport routes approved by the authorities are becoming longer and longer and the transport conditions more and more difficult. 
You refer to the transport of the LRT rough terrain crane to the port in Zeebrugge as a trial. What's really new about it? The challenge was that the Rhine ferry from Mannheim doesn't travel to Zeebrugge because firstly, it's not suitable for travel on the high seas and secondly, it's too large for Belgian canals. However, the western ports are only a reasonable alternative for the global export of our machines if we can reach both Antwerp and Zeebrugge. And that's what we needed to test. It sounds like your plan worked out. What's your conclusion? The trial was extremely successful. The collaboration with our partners went very well. Of course, we still have to do a little work behind the scenes to check whether this trial can be adopted as a permanent standard. Yes, transporting the LRT 1090-2.1 on a low loader from Ehingen to Mannheim and then on the Rhine ferry to Antwerp, and then by Roro Barge to Zeebrugge, was about 30% cheaper than transporting it the whole way Ehingen to Zeebrugge on a low loader. In addition, we were able to reduce greenhouse gases by around 28%. That is a step in the right direction and much greener. It means that we now have a very good alternative for transporting our machines by water to the port of Seebrugge and from there to our customers all over the world. Thank you both very much. The example of the LRT is of course transferable to other mobile cranes and is a possible solution to the pressing issue of shifting transport from road to water. We're going to keep working on it. Assembling and erecting long luffing jibs in constricted conditions is a challenge in everyday crane operations. We discussed the situation with customers and found a solution which will be available as from next year. Its name, the NK system. Jenny, you're a design engineer in our lattice jib department and responsible for the development of this new system. Where did the idea for the development come from? Although it's sometimes just a matter of a few meters, the space available on the site is often simply not enough to assemble a luffing jib on the ground and then attach it to the crane. Our challenge was therefore to find a fast, safe and easy solution for the space-saving assembly of a luffing jib. And the solution had to ensure that there was no need to use a platform or cage for working at heights. Our solution is to hinge the luffing jib during its assembly. That's also the reason behind the name NK, which stands for luffing jib and hinge. To achieve this, we designed a new additional lattice section, which houses the hinge function, the NK section. The new system saves an average of 30% space on the site. For assembling a 63-meter luffing jib, that means you require 30 meters less space. 30% less space sounds good. What does this change in terms of assembly and alignment? The 7-meter NK section, which is installed instead of a conventional 7-meter lattice type section, divides the luffing jib into two halves, the first half of the jib and the second half of the jib. However, the two halves are not necessarily exactly the same length. The main point is that the NK section has a separating point where it's hinged. In the first step, the first half of the jib, including NK section 1, is assembled on the ground. NK section 1 is supported in the pulley cart during this process. The telescopic boom is then luffed up and the half of the luffing jib is lowered until the jib head hangs downwards. For long luffing jibs, the telescopic boom must be extended at the same time. In the second step, NK section 2 and the second half of the luffing jib, including the head section, are attached. The rest is then almost automatic. Extend the telescopic boom and raise the luffing jib. It sounds simple, and it really is. OK, got it. What else do I need? All the work can be carried out from the ground or from near the ground using a stepladder. 
There's no need for working at height with a platform or safety cage. The NK system is also monitored in full by the control system and features both electronic and mechanical safety devices. So in short, you don't need anything else. Is the NK system available for both boom lengths of the LTM 1650-8.1? The NK system will be available for both the 54 and the 80 meter telescopic boom. In other words, the T3 NK and T5 NK. We're currently working hard on the final tests. Thank you, Jenny. And finally, for your information, the NK system will also be available for LTM 1650-8.1 cranes which have already been delivered. If you require any more information, please don't hesitate to contact us. And now it's high time for a job. And as promised, it's a special job. Many people don't even know that it exists, the Liebherr Fire Service Crane. Currently, this is our LTM 1070-4.2, a special version of which is available for fire services. Let's take a closer look. When the fire service is called out on a job, it generally has to happen quickly. Since everything on the LTM 1070-4.2 is already installed on the vehicle, the crane can set off to the site straight away and it doesn't need to carry any extra ballast. This saves valuable time. Once it arrives on site, the crane only needs about 15 minutes to set up. To ensure that everything goes quickly in an emergency, everything must run smoothly. That's why the crane operators, as the people who drive and operate the crane are called, are trained by Liebherr. Further training takes place on site. The powerful LTM 1070-4.2 is as varied as the jobs to which fire service teams are called. On motorways, the 70-ton crane helps lift crashed trucks. Thanks to its 50-meter boom, it can even recover vehicles that have ended up off the road. Trams that have become derailed can be returned to their tracks safely by the crane. In addition, a rescue cage for up to 10 people can be attached to the boom. This means that the LTM 1070-4.2 can work at great heights, but also, for example, at ports and underground. The long boom is also a great help for fighting fires. A water cannon installed at the top of the lattice boom can be used to extinguish at great heights. The water cannon can deliver up to 4,000 liters of water per minute. Instead of fighting the fire using breathing apparatus in the cage of a turntable ladder appliance, the water cannon can be controlled remotely from a safe distance away from the source of the fire. Even the spray pattern can be controlled remotely. Working from distance is particularly valuable at chemical plants where potentially toxic fumes are involved. And that's all for today. But we'll be back again soon. Then we'll be taking a closer look at the new LRT 1130-2.1 rough terrain crane and everything else that's happened since Baumann. Take care and see you soon.